Hi everyone, it is March 17, 2023, and we're here to discuss the markets. Uh, the title is Banking Crisis Bailouts. Today we'll be discussing evaluating potential squeeze points. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay. <clears throat> So a lot of the bears are actually saying that this is not a QE. And um, there was just the $300 billion that was used up by some banks from the Fed that they have to pay for with uh, 4.75 interest rates. Nonetheless, the markets reacted highly positive on the rescue package. And we are now actually evaluating how high these potential squeeze points are. So according to people smarter than me, they said that um, you can actually view her tweet. I shared it in my account, my Twitter account at Physis Trader by Danielle DiMartino Booth. What she is saying is that before any misinformation spreads about why the Fed's balance sheet grew one week ago by $300 billion, it's because the discount window at the Fed is open. So according to her, the $300 billion expansion is not hyperinflationary as the banks would have to pay a high interest for everything they borrow. In fact, it will drain liquidity as quantitative tightening intends. And she basically believes that the 25 basis points hike is still in the running for March 22 next week. So that would, of course, be music to the bear's ears. Let's just go for a following thing. Uh, take note that last night, uh, the banks rushed to backstop liquidity, borrowing $165 billion from the Fed. The discount window borrowing surged to a record $152 billion, and the new facility usage is now totaling $11.9 billion in just three days. Banks have borrowed a combined $165 billion from two Federal Reserve backstop facilities in just this week, a sign of escalated funding strains in the aftermath of Silicon Valley Bank's failure as more regional banks are trying to, uh, to withdraw their deposits and go through some larger banks. Uh, data published by the Fed showed that $152.85 billion in borrowing from the discount window, the traditional liquidity backstop in the week ended March 15 at a record high, up from 4.58 uh, billion the previous week. Take note that this is higher than the previous all-time high of $111 billion reached during the 08 financial crisis. These are being shown by others that the balance sheet of the Fed has risen from $9 trillion peak to a low of about $8.3 uh, trillion and is now hitting $8.6 trillion because of that Fed... Um, so this is a Fed balance sheet, and a lot of people are tweeting about this $300 billion increase expansion. Take note that a lot of people are also taking a look at the U.S. Treasury, which is the total public debt outstanding. And as of March 15, you could see that the U.S. Fed Treasury debts versus the face value of the U.S. public debts now have a credibility gap at the widest margin. And since September 2022, the market value of the U.S. Fed debt has risen around 4%, reflecting the release of securities from the Fed's balance sheet. This is the discount window borrowing reaching record highs. Now, the Fed discount already hit $153 billion, $165 billion right now. And that is um, from a monetary or a nominal term that is higher than the March 08 and higher than the strains during the COVID time. And um, however, if you use it as a share of aggregate deposits, note that this borrowing is still below the global financial crisis levels, which some, some bulls are arguing um, as a share of deposit is, um, is still lower. Um, as a share of bank deposits, Fed discount window borrowing reached 87 uh, basis points below 154 basis points at the peak of the global financial crisis. Okay. Now, this is also what others are tweeting. Jennifer, Jeffrey Snyder here. There will be those who tell you that this is a good thing, a good sign. Hello, the Fed is doing its job. But take a look at these comparisons. When the primary credit use goes away up, goes way up, the bad things happen or have already happened. So around November 2008, this was a bad sign, the increase until 2009. 
<clears throat> and this was also a bad sign during the COVID-related drop. And this week, as you can see, the Federal Reserve balance sheet and the primary credit liquidity facilities were used to backstop the bank uh, crisis. Also, take a look. Uh, in recent uh, news, uh, of course, Bank of America is raising money. Richard Wallen also shared this. So to the earlier conversation about Bank of America, here are the FFI EC numbers going back over the last four years. Brian Moynihan, the CEO of Bank of America, owns half a trillion in mortgage-backed securities. We figure about 3% um, cost of capital here. And the negative equity is much bigger than JP Morgan, which we published earlier. Note that these are the following numbers, the goodwill and other intangible assets, uh, mark-to-market adjusted um, potential losses. And um, basically, they believe that there is... Um, a huge drawdown that is currently happening in mortgage bank securities in the Bank of America, which is a top four bank in the USA. Also, um, amongst the people who believe that what happened is not a Fed bailout, they are pointing out to the following things. The Fed balance sheet has gone to a peak of $9 trillion, fell to $8.3, rose to about $8.6 trillion today. However, if you notice at the reverse repo balance in the right, this is all negative yielding loans to the banks. None of it is going to go to the S&P 500. And if you look at the Treasury general accounts to the right, we're still in a drain liquidity that happened uh, over the last uh, few years now. And you could see that um, the reverse repo is still in effect. So quantitative tightening is still in effect, according to the bears. Now, a lot of the traders are obviously on the hook after this whipsaw week uh, as the Fed decision looms. Take note that the two-year Treasury has gone from 5% to as low as 4%, even below 4%. There is, however, an 80% probability of a 25 basis points hike this March 22, 2023, although more and more traders believe that a possible pause could happen this March 22. Take note that the swaps are pricing in 80% odds of a quarter point hike next week. The gauge of bond volatility is jumping to the highest since the 08 crisis. Let's take a look at the following news as well. Just today, Baidu released um, their version of ChatGPT, and a lot of the users um, made their experiences known about this, triggering a 15% rebound on the shares of Baidu. 9888 Hong Kong. The market's demand for the industrial application of general large scale models is rapidly stimulated, and Baidu is expected to rely on historical accumulation and first mover advantages to quickly acquire users and data. More than 75,000 corporate users have already applied for a trial of the Ernie API developed by Baidu Cloud. This is, of course, the rival of uh, ChatGPT in, um, in China. And you can take note that um, there is no such thing as ChatGPT in China, and it will be monopolized by Baidu's Ernie Bot. This is Baidu's Ernie Bot. Take note that after um, discussions of uh, a release on the Ernie Bot, we've always been seeing a pop on the shares. Here from 130 to 170, here from 130 to 150. Nowadays, there is still a pop 120 to 140, although there are lower highs happening here. It doesn't seem as if the bulls are uh, phased here. We can see that the volumes on every pop has been very large. And the recent pop is actually still continuously very large. Possible to still see $170 for Baidu. This is not an advice to buy, but it's more like an observation that there still seems to be a ton of bulls related to the chat GPT high plays such as Baidu. Now, take note that the buy... Um, the movement last night of the entire big tech has been very, very strong. AMD closes at the peak, 96.6 uh, over the last uh, few months. We'll show you the charts again. NVIDIA is now closing at 255, also in the extended hours still up. Google is now trading at 101. Microsoft is $276. Amazon is $100. Meta is $205 on the news of a TikTok ban that is possibly going to benefit Meta, um, TikTok ban in the U.S. or a potential sale. Uh, but the, the discussions of a sale are not yet sure on whether it will really happen or not. 
QQQs are strong, uh, closing at 307. We'll see how high QQQ will be. Today's discussion is to evaluate the potential squeeze points on the big tech. Netflix is currently 310. You've got Tesla trading at 184. Apple at 156. Spy nearing 400 here at 396. Visa 217. MasterCard at 348. We're noting the largest cap companies that are triggering and skewing the SPY and the QQQs towards higher highs. Okay, um, take note as well that the banks last night really recovered, although um, despite the concentrated bailout for FRC, First Republic Bank, Take note that 11 banks have pledged $30 billion to provide loans for FRC so that withdrawals uh, in this regional bank will be, uh, will be less. Uh, however, despite that rescue package, extended hours are showing FRC down 17%. The rest of the banks in the pre-markets are also giving up some of the gains, showing us volatility in financials continue to be rife and people believe that the banking crisis is far from over and there will be stronger repercussions and more sell-offs happening within the banking space. Now, how fast can a bear run? Let's just take a look at this. I'm currently conjuring some nightmarish scenarios for the bears. Not to say that it will happen, but it's more like so that I could prepare, so that you could prepare, we could prepare. Of course, the Fed hiking rates on March 22 would nullify all these, especially if the Fed hikes more than 50 basis points or 50 basis points. Nonetheless, we should take note at what happens even before the Fed hikes or doesn't hike rates. As I said, there are companies that are essentially outperforming, so we would expect that companies like Baidu, no matter perhaps what a Fed rate hike or not rate hike happen, seems like there's tons of support at 120 and um, more supports over here at about 110, despite lower highs happening here, higher lows since the lows of November here at 70 as well. Now, for safety purpose, we are going to assume that the worst is we will rally back all the way towards August 2022, which was your most recent high here. You've got uh, NASDAQ trading at about 13,500 then. That would be QQQ trading at 335. Take note that the current four-day rally on announcements of uh, Fed bailouts towards the SVB collapse uh, and even the Credit Suisse contagion fears, which is also um, uh, happening with FRC and other um, regional banks necessitating the bank term funding program or basically allowing a discount window open for many banks to uh, to get from the Fed and the FDIC to assure investors and the, uh, not investors to assure depositors that their money in the in the bank is going to be safely insured, even if it is more than two fifty thousand dollars. Take note that the indices on the queues rallied strongly seven point eight percent in four days. So this is a very very strong rally. Um, we could see, uh, let's take a look at whether this can continue. First resistance would be 314 here, or 320, and then 335, or a 17% rally since Monday. We don't know if that would happen, but these are potential scenarios or nightmare scenarios for any bear to take a look at. We're also going to estimate the further risk for another squeeze on the SPY. So currently, the SPY has already moved 1,000 points in just four days, 11.6 towards 12.6. Could we rally another 1,000 points to rally 20% from the recent lows? We will see whether that happens, but make sure. Uh, we, we do believe that 13.7 is a recent high resistance that would persist. However, we should be aware that any potential squeezes can still happen. Although 12 8 or 13,000 could provide a short-term resistance, we are on the view of a really nightmare scenario here for any bear, just for safety. So uh, for safety procedures, we are going to try to check out how high these rallies can go. So uh, 13 7 or another 1,000 points to be prepared just in case the Fed surprises on a non-rate hike, even if 80% of the probability says that they will. 
Now, April expiries for those who have bear spreads uh, or bearish puts on April 21, 2023, which is the next large monthly expiry zone. We did check the QQQs and the max pain theory will show us that if we do have more squeezes, the QQQ can go as high as towards 320 for April 21, 2023. We better be prepared as more and more um, option traders sell puts towards the 280 strikes and uh, buy calls towards 320. The max pain would be about 296. The current prices are actually above that max pain. So we will see whether um, so the supports are now on the max pain areas of about 300 or 296. So there's still a lot of um, puts versus calls. That means that sellers of puts are plenty. Sorry, um, when you are a retail, you're buying a put, so you are bearish, whereas um, the, the market makers are essentially your counterparty, so they are selling puts. Therefore, um, it's, the, it's the market makers who are essentially trying to hedge themselves by the fact that so many bears continue to remain. Actually, we are still at the fear zone. We went from extreme fear to fear which means that although um, there is significant um, stress in the market, because there's also so much fear in the market, um, the indicators can still suggest that we could still squeeze higher due to abundance of fear. Uh, abundance of fear in the market usually um, tells you that the market can still actually squeeze higher. Now, these are the kinds of squeezes that we would further face regarding NVIDIA. Take note that NVIDIA used to have a problem here at 240, but last night that was quickly broken and actually broken with a bullish engulfing to the upside at 255. Now that it has reached 255, that is a 14% rally over the last four days and pretty strong because that broke a very important resistance that is now a short-term support. Although this is an extension after an extension, take note that the recent highs here are 290s. So at 255, further to 290, we are of the view to watch out for a potential 13% rally in NVIDIA, which could be nullified, as I said, but it's better to be prepared before actually assuming that the worst for the bears is over. Now, crypto kids can also run a mock. Some people believe that the Fed balance sheet expansion is very positive towards crypto. Take note that Coinbase has rallied from 50 to 68 or a 36% increase in just four days. Should this rally all the way towards the recent high here, which is 88, another 28% pop to the upside towards 90 so for those bears out there who are quite confident that 70 and 80 bears are actually good, take note that this can run amok uh, towards 90. So we have to be very careful even if um, the Fed balance sheet is purported to be not an expansion but actually a negative carry to anyone who borrows from the Fed's discount window. Take note as well, AMD shot up, breaking above that 88 towards a 10% move to towards 96. That is a stronger move than NVIDIA. Take note that AMD has gone 23% over the last four days, Monday to Thursday, from low 80s to now 96. We should see um, if ever there is further squeezes ahead for March 17 tonight or even next week until the Fed um, really quashes any bullish behavior. For now, though, 96 can still rally and muster up towards the recent highs of 110 or another 12% up. Either it happens tonight, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow meaning um, on Monday before the Fed event on March 22, which is still Wednesday. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the Microsoft, which is the ChatGPT owner uh, on the release of the ChatGPT 4 and all the hype on the AI. Take note that Microsoft has gone from 245 to a peak of about 276, a 12% job quite similar to NVIDIA. This hasn't got new highs yet, unlike NVIDIA. But it is pretty strong to the point that the next rally point either stops here below 300 
or even catalyzes towards 316 for a full reversal only to be resisted here at 320 area. So just watch out just in case uh, Microsoft's resistance next uh, for, for the ultimate um, for the ultimate nightmare scenario for bears is about 316. Apple's ultimate uh, nightmare scenario for any bear would be at $180 here with 165 as a near-term resistance. So we just watch out because these moves are pretty strong. You could see that this is from 145 towards 155. That is a pretty significant standard deviation move for all of these big tech assets as more and more people are scrambling for a safety zone and they are actually finding big tech to be the safe haven, at least for the short term. That seems to be the case with the price action over the last four days. So it wouldn't surprise us if another 5% move towards Apple could bring your SPY and the QQQs towards those really, really high levels. Now, Tesla has been rallying, although not much. Actually, Tesla has been underperforming against your um, NVIDIA, against AMD, against Apple, against Microsoft. We're seeing Tesla rally, although just here towards 184. So it did rally from 163, and it's now at about 184. It could continue higher. First resistance, though, here at about 220, which is just 17% pop if ever Tesla rallies. So we don't think that um, a rally towards 220 is out of the picture. It is highly possible. But um, unlike other charts like NVIDIA or Microsoft, Tesla has lower uh, momentum here with more resistances at 220. Google also has been pretty strong these past four days. Like all the rest of the big tech, you're seeing this rally near 90s towards 100. That's a 10% pop, although nothing um, outperforming against, the, against your Microsoft or AMD or NVIDIA. We're seeing Google just follow the trend, and um, if the trend continues to go higher, then maybe Google can rally towards 110 or 112. 113, that would be your next resistance point for Google. Google and Tesla is displaying a less than um, strong performance against Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Apple. Now, just because NVIDIA and AMD are very, very strong, take note that the SOX S, which is your daily semiconductor 3X, Bears are obviously tanking uh, due to the strength of NVIDIA and AMD. From about 24, this has already dropped more than 22% towards 18, 19 in just four days. Should NVIDIA and AMD continue higher, just be aware that these 20, 19 areas can collapse further towards 16 areas. So be a little bit careful if you are assuming that SOX S has already um, bottomed out here. Um, or assume that NVIDIA is already peaking there. It could be uh, further strains ahead for bears, so just watch out. But we will, we're will we still actually bearish in the entire marketplace, um, even in the big tech, despite this safe haven uh, movement. But we're just actually trying to assume, as I said, we're estimating the potential nightmare scenarios for the bears, so that if you are a caught bear there, you will be more prepared in case April or next few weeks continues running up. Volatility and uncertainty remains for the financial bears. As you could see, with the banking crisis uh, erupting this entire week with the SVB collapse, the contagion crisis from Euro European financials, and then the regional bank withdrawals uh, pertaining to FRC, uh, WAL, Key, and so many other regional banks. Intervention left and right uh, provided a small relief rally, which triggered this drop from about 25 towards 23 toward, towards the FAS. Nonetheless, uh, with, with further strain in financials, for the ultimate bears, I think that any dips on financials still remain in the bearish control. That means that people remain bearish on JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and all the rest of the smaller banks um, on any rallies, though, which means that financial bears here at about 18 and 19. We're not saying that there will be support there, but we believe that it, it, it might actually present some supportive areas for those who are shorting financial. So we're actually watching out for these things still, um, yeah. But uh, this can also be 
Uh, but last night is also possibly um, the short-term top for anyone who is um, shorting financials. We can see a huge short covering moment there, um, almost reminiscent to the huge short covering here around October when the entire financials actually bottomed out. So we'll see. Um, SQQQ, because the Qs are indeed rallying, um, led by your NVIDIA, led by Microsoft, led by Apple. The SQQQ, if it fails this 32 area, which means that 27 is next. That means that if um, the QQQ breaks above 310 or 315, then this 32 can easily drop towards 27. Uh, that means your Microsoft hits a very, very fast move towards 290 and so on. Your ARC is continuing higher, 12% uh, higher. Should the market continue to buy some growth names on account of this uh, intervention within the banking crisis, we're seeing that it could potentially squeeze higher with the uh, abundance of buyers in uh, in Coinbase yet again, and a lot of um, growth names yet again. So just in case the market squeezes higher, resistance on ARC remains here at 45 or another 14% higher. You've got Amazon, which is uh, actually the weakest among the uh, mega caps. Nonetheless, Amazon also rose quite substantially. You're seeing a 14.5% move here from a low of about near 88 towards 100 could see another 14% rally towards 115, which is your previous resistance. This went down, remember, on negative cash flows on their earnings. There might be another chance to short Amazon or buy very cheap puts here at about 115 area. We'll see whether that really, uh, whether this happens. It could either be a nightmare scenario for bears or actually a heaven scenario for bears because why is it a heaven scenario heavenly scenario for bears because you get to buy very cheap puts uh, at a very very low price at a very high resistance for amazon if it happens now of course hang seng went up today on account of those massive bailouts or at the very least um, the perceived uh, notion that there is a liquidity backstop for all the financials in the U.S. So you've got the Hang Seng Index. You've got all of them rallying over 3%, 2.5% for the day. Um, that has been a supportive uh, function for your uh, Tencent, Alibaba, China Mobile. Um, so mostly your tech firms have been rallying again. Um, a few things to also watch uh, in the U.S. Some companies who had reported good earnings have been in a steady climb ever since 2023. So for CrowdStrike, this has gone from 100 to 130s. We don't know if this is an uptrend channel towards 160, but we are on the lookouts for companies in the cybersecurity zone, given that companies like Palo Alto and CrowdStrike have been reporting good numbers same as for Palo Alto, look at this level from 140 to 190, quite a strong reversal. Whether um, we have good earnings and good market sentiment um, with the backstop on, uh, on, on, the, on the banking, uh, liquidity backstop on the banking, either $200 or 220 could be um, the first resistance for Palo Alto Networks. We're not sure if there is fund rotation flows towards companies that reported good earnings or will this ultimately top out somewhere here at about 220? We'll see about that. But it's in the watch list. First Solar is also one of those momentum leaders. Take note that after good earnings, very strong volume on the upside. From 160, this rallied all the way towards 210s, 215s, and currently is actually just consolidating near the top with higher lows. So given market sentiment, although these companies could be highly valued or very high flyer-ish, just be aware that um, as long as market sentiment continues to the upside, these momentum names like First Solar, Palo Alto Networks, or even the likes of CrowdStrike, despite coming from lower, uh, lower trajectory, can actually make some uptrend channel. Uh, for any bulls um, or, or, or give actually nightmare scenarios for any bears. Um, also, no positions, but uh, 6 to 16 for Fastly so far. Take note that very strong surge here on the good earnings uh, released this first quarter of 2023. 
possibly recovering from bottom fishing. You've got a lot of buyers at 10, rally towards 16, consolidated over the massive paranoia uh, in the markets. And then from about 12, rallied very strongly towards 16. These can actually potentially rally towards 20 or even 26. Very huge gaps to be filled there if and only if earnings continue to surprise on the upside by May, which is their next quarter reports. Now, FedEx today is actually up more than 10% after hours, raising guidance. So after cost cutting, leading to strong earnings, just watch out for these types of movements. You're seeing that some of the squeezes are all related to the big caps, but some movements are also related to the earnings or company related or specifically um, raising guidance, for instance, for FedEx, which could actually help the economy um, recover at the very least. Take note that September, October, this went from 140 and it's now trading actually at about 230. Um, you've got the traders also trying to recover gap ups here during the earnings. Another but another bottom made here on the earnings and another gap up on the earnings. So Jeff Green of the trade desk seems to be getting quite a lot of gap ups on every earnings season. Could may also lead to a gap up. We are seeing a lot of buyers towards 40 and 50s in uh, trade desk. So um, this should be on the watch list if you are a bull. And if you are a bear, this should be a nightmare stock for you to trade because this would have a lot of bullish gap ups considering the past few quarters of outs, outperformance. Okay, so um, that was very quick, I know. Um, for those who are uh, looking at the options market, let's try to open, um, let's try to open a few things first in the pre-markets. Okay, so I'll open also um, the Webull desktop platform. So right now, we're actually seeing that cryptocurrencies are actually benefiting from that relief rally. You're seeing Mara is now trading at $8. You're seeing Coinbase now trading at $71. So a lot of pre-market movers on the upside. Futures are actually wavering, but actually on the upside, as you could see, indices remain near highs. NASDAQ at about 12.6. Your SPY is trading near 4,000 yet again. So although it is uh, teetering at those highs, we, we still consider these squeezes still capable to continue higher and continue to extend, really um, hurting any bears that continue to remain bearish in the markets. Okay, uh, let's take a look at these movements here. So your Coinbase is now trading at $71.00. You could see um, that the call options, even for April 21, let's just take a look at these. So the $70 calls here have been rallying up. You are seeing the 70 calls go up 20% last night. This could continue further. Uh, that means that there will continue to be further pain for any bears in the cryptocurrency land. I also believe that um, the markets are pushing a lot of the Bitcoin plays yet again. Let's take a look at those. Let's just show to you the movements. You can't seem to see where I placed that uh, table. Anyhow, uh, BTC is actually trading at about 26,000. I'll just show you the chart. Okay, so um, a lot of movement on the upside. Either this is caused by potential short squeeze, which is still ongoing, actually. Let's show you some charts here. So BTC is now actually up 30%. Uh, from March 11 Sunday, uh, sorry, March 12 Sunday, and of course the last four days, 13, 14, 15, 16, and also continuing to day 17. So, so far, just in case we continue higher for the squeeze, the next squeeze point for Bitcoin is around $35,000 here. Although there could be some resistance here at 33, I surmise that this 30% move would try to be replicated after um, after all, this is actually a $10,000 movement. 
from 15,000 to 25,000. That means that this is a 10,000 range that could actually trigger towards 35K anytime within the next few weeks to further exacerbate the squeeze. So just watch out. Um, if Bitcoin hits near 35,000, of course, we view that Mara and um, Coinbase will continue their movements higher. Please watch out. Mara is actually moving from 5 here to about $8 already. Further squeezes can actually happen towards 10 or even 12 here. Um, take note that Coinbase, as you can see, has rallied from about uh, 50 to 70 and can continue higher towards 80s or 90s. Uh, we're not bullish, but we are warning people that these potential scenarios could happen. Um, now, let's also uh, get back to a few things here. Regional banks, as you can see, still volatile, but uh, the extended hours are showing um, still gains actually in the sector. So your financials or FAS is actually getting bought here. There's a lot of buyers uh, protecting the 50 area so far with the Fed backstop. And take note on that volume here. So despite that capitulation, a lot of people are also trying to buy the banks here at about 50 areas for fast. So something to watch out for the financials. Uh, lots of buyers uh, cloistering in here. Um, also, let's watch sector by sector. So um, for gold, uh, gold has been terribly bid, uh, just like Bitcoin has been. So you could see that people have also flocked en masse to, towards buying gold uh, on light of the bailouts. From about 1800, we're now seeing 1930s. Do we go as high as 2000 areas or even 21 within the next couple of weeks? That is highly possible. In terms of gold place, we are actually looking at a few names that have benefited on that move, which is the largest gold miner here, which is Newmont Corp. 41 is trading quite nicely here at 46. Do we rally towards 48 and back towards 52? We're seeing also the movement on your Barrick Gold. Barrick Gold has been rallying as well from 16 to 17.4. A lot of buyers on gold plays, a lot of buyers on silver. Let's take a look at the silver trust here. Take note the silver has gone up from about 18 towards 20, or a 10% rally, which could continue towards 22. A lot of commodity bulls on gold and silver are buying it up. Take note, though, that um, some names are not getting benefit uh, of the doubt yet. Uranium is actually still hovering here at 19s and 18s, not yet rallying. We watch out for that. Also take a look that last night, some energy bulls have started buying um, shares, such as uh, Warren Buffett. I believe Warren Buffett disclosed buying something like uh, 18 million shares of Occidental on the recent dip. Uh, we're seeing Occidental buyers cloistering, cloistering here at about 55. Exxon Mobil, uh, after some big drops in the week, is actually getting bought below 100. Even as we go towards 90, it looks like there's still a ton of bulls on the energy markets. You can see that there is still that up uptrend over at large cap stocks uh, like Exxon Mobil. Let's take a look at the Chevron here. Chevron also getting bought up here at about 150. Although it's not yet clear whether it will fall 140s, seems like there are quite also a ton of buyers. You can see that volume coming in towards uh, some oil plays here. XLE, which is the largest ETF play for the sector, is actually getting bought last night from 75 to 78. So it seems like there are actually buyers determined to buy energy plays and commodity plays over this um, um, Fed backstop. So the 72, 73 areas for XLE seems to be getting a lot of love. Uh, let's take a look at your shale names. Uh, after some big nasty drops for the week, yesterday we started seeing quite a lot of buyers, as I said, on Occidental. We saw some buyers on Devon, Matador, some shale names here and there. Um, seems like um, it's something for us to watch out for, although the Biden administration is obviously against the big oil and there are some big oil climate case, cases um, being passed on to the big ones. Okay, let's take a look as well on. Um, so the banks have been getting bought. Reopening related names have been also being bought. Uh, let's take a look at some of these fly, high flyers. 
Airbnb uh, was bought up last night. Uh, that was a very quick pop, uh, but we don't know if that is just a short-term pop, which will continue lower because uh, Airbnb has been falling from 145 down towards 110. So any rallies here could be stopped at 130. Uh, still not a good look on Airbnb, but actually the first move higher last night is something for some bulls to watch out for. Um, over at Talent here, after some good earnings, just watching out for some movements here. It has been well supported here at $7 so far. Uh, so any bulls and Talent here still seems to still be uh, keeping their shares. Also for C-Limited, which reported quite a good number recently, we're seeing that the consolidation is still on the uptrend and might even rally back towards 85 or 90s. Um, let's take a look as well on companies that have been... Um, uh, reporting uh, significantly better results. So actually, uh, even if the bears were trying to sell off Mercado Libre, Mercado Libre is still actually trading at about 1,250. And if this actually breaks above 1,250, this might actually rally towards 1,4 or 1,5 even further. So um, watch out for any bears out there. We're seeing actually some bullish price action even on some e-commerce names here. Mercado Libre showing that love. Shopify actually also showing that love, which we think is actually supportive of the movement of ARK going up towards 45. Seems to be that there are buyers here for Shopify. Also seeing a lot of buyers uh, on Roblox. We're seeing that Roblox has been um, supported here at about 25, supported at 35. Um, and the recent relief rally has triggered Roblox buyers to hit as high as 45. And if 45 manages to actually break, then you have 50s and 58s. So this is a huge warning for any bear out there that it looks like further squeezes ahead could be happening over uh, over a lot of growth names uh, such as Shopify, such as Roblox, C Limited, even the likes of CrowdStrike, Palo Alto Network, to name a few. Okay, um, we're also seeing, of course, a lot of social media stocks going up. Um, in light of a potential TikTok ban, Meta has been very strong. We're seeing that rally. It could continue towards 220 before this uh, subsides. So very strong movement there for your Meta. Um, we're seeing Snapchat here uh, actually trying to follow the movements because of the Met, uh, because of a potential TikTok ban. First uptick last night here from 10 to 11. So yeah. Um, I don't want to like confuse you guys, but it looks like the bulls. Oh, shocks. I've been talking and talking. I thought that I was sharing my charts. Ah, so stupid of me. Um, I was like talking and talking a while ago and I was like using my charts to show it. Uh, either way, um, really seeing that there's a ton of bullish charts uh, in just four days. Um, which can continue actually, even uh, even with the confusion of the market on whether this is a Fed bailout or not a Fed bailout. Is this uh, a QE or not a QE? Uh, so I would suggest that with the confusion in the market, one thing is um, if you're confused, reduce exposure. So if you're a bear, be aware that you could get killed here. Um, if you're a bull, then of course the last four days would have been heaven for you. But then again, it could also be a, a quick move. Uh, either it ends on Friday today or it ends on Wednesday next week. So just be aware of the event-driven uh, volatility that's happening towards um, all these types of names. Uh, not just big tech, not just the banks, and not just semiconductors. We're seeing actually pretty strong moves even in growth names and even the companies that had reported good earnings. So... Um, I think that um, the the bulls on gold and silver definitely are in control so far. Uh, the bulls in Bitcoin also definitely in control so far. So we will actually respect the movement and see how high these things go. Um, there are questions. Uh, I answered actually NVIDIA. It looks like NVIDIA can still potentially go as high as 290 uh, to the sacrificial movements of the bears uh, because there continues to be quite a lot of uh, short squeezes happening, extensions over extensions. I wouldn't buy NVIDIA, but as long as uh, it remains above 240, uh, any bear should be aware that NVIDIA can hit as high as 290 before this is over. 
So um, just be careful out there. I don't know if um, drops will come, but people are betting that the drop will happen on March 23, um, which is a day after the Fed rate hike. We'll see um, how strong Jerome Powell will decide uh, against his fight towards inflation. We'll see how the market will also interpret his speeches and whether he pauses, he raises rates, and so on. Take note that the ECB, uh, Lagarde, Christine Lagarde, ra raised the European rates towards um, additional 50 basis points um, despite the current... Um, uh, raising of capital of um, of Credit Suisse. So we're seeing actually that this volatile movement in the market is uh, very confusing um, and high standard deviation um, movements. Uh, volatility is high. There's When volatility is high, there's huge gamma risk. What's gamma risk? Gamma risk means that the options can go 5x uh, up or down. And if you're selling it, you could be pretty killed or, well, not killed. Your defined bears could get hit. So defined bear spreads will tell you that you would lose a certain amount, $300, $350. It's a defined bear. But then again, um, due to the heightened volatility, it's highly likely that gamma risk is also very high. Uh, for any uh, seller of credit spreads. So just be aware that um, these um, volatility times may actually be better off for people to watch, observe, and be in cash. Now, unfortunately, if you already have bears um, that will expire in April, May, and June, I would suggest that um, the volatility could be tamed um, how would you do that? You can manage the trade after the Fed speech is uh, after the Fed speech. That is one. You can manage your trades um, knowing uh, what the interest rates will be. Because until today, there's still a lot of betting going on on whether Fed will rate hike, Fed will pause, or Fed will actually pivot. Um, there's a lot of confusion in the market, and it's quite evident in the two-year treasuries, uh, you're seeing the yields, uh, two-year treasury. Let's just show to you that. Well, we can see um, many charts here. This is your TMF. A lot of strong movements, but also on the downside and upside. Very confusing, actually. These are your 20-year Treasury bond ETFs being confused. Um, your two-year Treasury. Gov two-year. Or even if you love, just look at treasury yield five years. So look at these movements. Your treasury yields are uh, fast drops and then raising. So people are, of course, uh, over the past year, it was quite okay. It was easy trend because we were just aware that the Fed will be raising rates. But now the market is uh, a little bit unsure on whether the Fed will raise rates or will the current um collapse in the banks actually make the Fed stop. So I don't have a specific answer. I think that it's better for us to watch the markets first. But obviously, I'm in the bear camp. Um, but even if I'm in the bear camp, I would want us to prepare in terms of our puts because we can actually end up making very cheap put options, cheap bearish puts, on March 23 so or March 22 on the day of the event. So I usually will react a day after the event uh, or during, but um, I'd rather watch the watch and observe. That, that's really my my conclusion on all these um, movements in the markets. Um, huge gamma risk. That's why any bear or any bull, uh, whatever your position is, you could easily get whipsawed in this type of market. Uh, when you say whipsaw, let's say you're already correct as a bear, and then you get whipsawed, then you get a loss. Or 
whip sauce and let's say you're a bull and then kala mo okay na ah, kala mo talo ka yung pala uy okay sobrang panalo ka so really um right now because of the huge volatility in the market we would suggest people to watch and observe especially events like these are pretty crucial in fact um the movement this week was considered a six sigma uh, standard deviation which happens only when you say six sigma 99% confidence interval out of bounds siya. it only happens like 1% of the time wherein um yun nga, um your fed bailouts are now uh, as high as 165 billion dollars in just a week so those are important things to consider. Uh, let's see how the markets will react. The first initial view of the market is that that's a QE. But um, if the Jerome Powell actually stresses that it's not QE, then the markets can actually fall and uh, go down uh, as it was happening over or over the last few days, like March 7, 8, 9, 10. So we'll see. Um, we'll have to watch, I think, the movements. Thank you very much, and that ends my broadcast. See you. See you next week.